I truly believe some entity was responsible. It was just too out of his character to take off all of his clothes. Again, I reiterated our commands to the ghosts. You're welcome here, just don't scare or harm me or my son. I had help from my family packing away items that we wanted to keep. During this time, another sister of mine came from the hallway and said that she smelled perfume strongly in the hallway like Chanel number no. 5. There were only three of us at the house that day and all of us were working together in the kitchen. No one had been in the hallway other than to pass through to get to the restroom. I smelled the perfume a couple of times too on different occasions. My mother-in-law had all kinds of aversions and I never knew her to wear perfume so I didn't think it was her spirit. Also, during this packing day, I was packing up her china from the china cabinet, and I suddenly got an overwhelming scent of body odor. I even did a pit check of myself, and it wasn't me. I did a covert sniff of my sister and friend helping me that day, and they didn't smell like it either. I was hesitant to tell them, but then I just had them come over to the china cabinet area and ask if they smelled anything. They both said B.O., and it wasn't any of us. I just chalked it up to another spirit encounter. Another time, I was getting ready to host the estate sale in the house. Everything was prepped and ready for a 7am start time the next day. As part of the setup, I had my mother-in-law's shoes neatly displayed on a shoe rack in the master bedroom just a few feet from the side of the bed that I was sleeping in. I got up that morning and showered. Nothing was amiss. When I came back into the room, the racked shoes were on the floor next to the bed that I had just woken up from. The rack was still in place properly, it's just that now all of the shoes were on the floor. I froze in place when I entered the room and saw the shoes. I was like, what the hell is going on here? There's no way they could have just fallen over by themselves and then been neatly placed there. They had been squarely placed on the rack the night before. I would have had to step over them to get out of bed. Additionally, some of the shoes were far from the rack. Even if they had fallen, there's no way they could have rolled that far. And it wasn't my son because I immediately checked on him and he was still sound asleep in his pack and play in a completely different room. Fast forward to later in the day of the estate sale. Another couple of friends came over to help me. After a busy morning, we had a lull in the afternoon. We tidied up a bit and put things back in place that had been handled by shoppers. We took a break and sat on the porch and chatted while we enjoyed the lull. I recounted to my friends about how I thought the house was haunted. One friend was really spooked when I told her about the perfume. She said that she too smelled it in the hallway earlier that morning. She said that she was walking behind a man in the hallway and she had an overwhelming scent of perfume. She thought it was odd that a man would be wearing such strong women's perfume. I said, well, you've met my ghost. Now for the really freaky stuff. So after I recounted all the incidents above to my friends during our break, I did a walk around of the house just to double check that things were in order for the next round of shoppers. I go into the master bedroom and the frigging shoes are on the floor again. I screamed this time. My friends came running to see what happened. They saw the shoes, and they were like, You're messing with us. I said, I swear to God I'm not messing with you. These shoes were not on the floor before. When we tidied up, I re-racked all of them. And the shoes were almost in the same exact position that they had been in that morning when I found them on the floor after my shower. Freaky, man. We eventually sold the house. I asked the realtor if there was a disclosure law for haunted houses. She said she's never heard of such a thing. I told her about how I thought the house was haunted, but she probably just thought I was crazy. Either way, I definitely experienced some paranormal activity there, and I would be so curious to find out if the new owners did as well. So, my family moved into the house in question in 1999. I was five at the time. The house isn't too old, built in the 70s, and I live in a very small community. So as far as I know, nothing bad ever happened there. Just to give you a quick layout of the house, 
When you come in the front door, to the left is a hallway, and the last door on the left is my bedroom. But there is a bathroom at the very end of the hallway. And the way the house was laid out is such that whenever the bathroom door is open, the mirror reflects back down the hall toward you. Things only happened after the sun went down. Ever since I was young, I would always wake up in the middle of the night either thirsty or hungry, so I would go to the kitchen to make a snack. While walking back to my room down the hall, I would always feel something right behind me, reaching, trying to grab a hold of me, which of course forced me to speed walk or light sprint back to my room, where I would sit quietly trying to calm my heart. Whenever the bathroom door is open though, and you could see your reflection in the hall, I never felt like I was being followed. But I would see shadows running around behind me and peeking their heads out around the corner like they didn't want to be seen. Shortly after we moved in, we got a dog. Since then, we always had dogs in the house. We've had three in total, and most of the time, if I was ever home alone, they would come and hang out with me. And every dog, even to this day, will occasionally just stare at my bedroom door that leads to the hall, or even snarl at it. Fast forward a few years to 17 to 18 year old me, I'm working a part-time retail job where I keep the keys to the store. On some occasions I had the mornings off, and someone would need the keys to open, so I left them in the mailbox outside my front door just so I wouldn't have to wake up early. It happened on two occasions where my coworker John would come to get the keys in the morning, and as he was getting back in the car, he would see somebody staring at him through my dad's bedroom window, which was the room next to mine. John stared at him for a few minutes and waved a little, but the figure didn't move or react. He would just look down to start his car, look back up, and the figure would be totally gone. He described the figure as a wrinkled old man with a bald head. Nobody in my family has ever matched that description, and at the time, my entire family had left for work, and I was still sound asleep in bed. I'm also not an old man. John had refused to ever go back to get the keys again after that. I don't know how many entities I have in my home, and though I have an uneasiness and nervous feeling, I never felt outright threatened, until one day. I was 22 at the time. I was just in the basement getting laundry on a normal day. Nothing was off. Nothing felt weird. It was 100% normal. I was finished folding all my clothes, so I went to carry them upstairs to my bedroom. And as I was climbing the stairs, I heard loud stomping coming from behind me, down the hallway where the laundry room was. Then they sped up as if somebody was running full sprint toward me. I spun around, and I saw this black figure round the corner and barrel up the stairs. It made it to within an inch of my face, and then disappeared. I almost shot myself. I've never felt such anger and malice in my whole life. I ran to my bedroom, slammed the door, and just sat there in silence, listening for any bit of movement at all but it was completely still. Those are the experiences that I've had so far. I can only guess what might come next, but I think it's safe to say I definitely live in a haunted house. About 10 years ago, my mom, two sisters, and I, and another small family that we were friends with, took a short trip to Northumberland. It's not too far from Alnwick Castle, where the first and second Harry Potter films were shot. My dad and the father of the other family had to work, so it was just our two moms and us seven children, aged between five and fifteen years old. Because the other family was quite wealthy, and we were not, they paid for the accommodation, which turned out to be an old country house built in the late 1700s, Newton Hall. It has since been stylishly refurbished into a wedding venue, but was then an eerie and isolated shadow of its 19th century preoccupants. I remember us all being shuffled through dark wood paneled passages into a large staircase lined with old portraits. We joked about it being like Hogwarts, 
the portraits as grim inhabitants with their eyes alive and moving, following us as we climbed the stairs. What was first a joke soon became a genuine concern in the following couple of days. As a side note, I'm still amazed at how we had the whole place to ourselves. Me being young then and not fully appreciating what the cost must have been to rent it out, my mom still claims it was because there were no more holiday rentals available in the area during summer, implying that this grand hall was a sort of last resort, but I don't think so. Anyway, in addition to the creepy paintings, there was a huge Native American style totem pole with its garish peeling paint and beady eyes glaring from multiple heads. This stood watch on the landing of the second floor. In a so-called playroom were various animal heads mounted on the walls, and in the tall corridors on the ground floor were benches, their legs fashioned from a brutal mesh of deer antlers. It was the benches that were the first cause for alarm. On the first morning, upon waking up, we noticed that one or two of these benches had moved a few inches from their proper placement at the wall's edge. However, this strange but subtle event was not given any thought, at least until the next morning when it happened again. I remember distinctly that the blame was put to the eldest of the seven children, Michael, who had a sort of mischievous manner about him, but he denied it. This physical disturbance in the already extremely scary house was enough to make us sleep in pairs. I remember that my older sister and I were taking turns sleeping on the side of the bed that faced the wall, rather than be exposed to anything that might come in the night. Only one other thing happened that seemed poignant enough for me to remember now. Three of the girls developed some kind of rash while we stayed at the hall. The doctor diagnosed it as empedigo, an infectious skin rash which explains the coincidence. However, the cause still remains completely ambiguous and was never discovered. I don't know if it was a natural infection or something more sinister. Either way, the home was the scene of one of the creepiest things I've ever experienced, before or since, and I genuinely hope to not experience anything like that again. In Thessaloniki, Greece, Several people consider a certain house to be very haunted. The house was said to have been the mansion of its previous owner, and today it has not been inhabited since it's dilapidated and the surrounding area has been transformed into a warehouse for building materials. It's rumored that those who have stayed there at night have heard terrible noises from ghosts roaming in the rooms, making them flee in terror. It is also said that the previous owner's building is accompanied by a curse that he put on it, and that anyone who lives there is in danger of going mad, and anyone who tries to demolish it is in danger of dying. In the past, two contractors decided to demolish it, but on the day of the planned demolition, they suddenly died. One died from a heart attack, and the other was killed in a traffic accident in Athens. I don't have any personal experience with this house, but I don't think I want any. When I was a little girl of about 10 or so, I would always go shopping with my aunt for my birthday. But this particular time was a little different. She wanted me to stay the night and then go shopping the next day. I agreed to do this because who doesn't love going shopping with your aunt as a kid? I was always creeped out by her house for the longest time before I stayed that night. My dad and brother have had experiences before me. They always camped out in the backyard in the woods. She had a big place, a house, a barn, a pool, even a pond, and lots of land. Sounds perfect, right? Anyway, they said that they saw a fog surrounding the house, not the barn or anything else but just the house. Creepy. And they also heard things in the woods, too. Yes, I am thinking what you're thinking, it was most likely animals. The fog was harder to explain. Either way, I figured that they were just trying to scare me, so I didn't think too much of it when the opportunity to stay there at night came up. Let's get on to that experience. 
I was up in the bedroom, right at the top of the stairs. If you walked straight up the stairs, you could walk straight into the bedroom. The catch to the bedroom is that it had a baby gate on it, so it was very hard to get in and out quickly. There was a home office to the left of the stairs, and then to the right, there was like another living room area, with an old time bedroom connected to it with dolls and glass tea sets. Oddly enough, that's the room that I felt the safest in. Off of the living room area was a long hallway that led to my aunt and uncle's room. I was laying in bed watching my favorite movie, Mary Poppins. It was at least 9pm at night. Bedtime for a child like me, right? I fell asleep during the movie. I woke up with the TV off and to a room that was completely pitch black. The door was open and I could barely see the staircase leading down. I tried to close my eyes so that I wouldn't be so scared, but what happened next, I can never forget. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs, and they weren't heavy, so I knew that they weren't my aunt or uncle. In fact, it sounded like a child walking up the steps. I hid under the covers and hoped that it would go away. The footsteps came all the way up the stairs, across the room and stood right next to my bed. I tried very hard to be still and quiet. Finally, the entity turned away, and I heard the little steps go back down the stairs. I was really relieved, until I heard them ascend the staircase once more. I was so scared I wanted to scream for my aunt, but she was so far away she wouldn't have been able to hear me anyway. It came back into the room again. As I hid under the covers for the second time, it came and stopped by the other side of the bed, closest to me. I felt it tug on my blanket, and then it turned away and walked back down the stairs. So this time I got smart, or stupid. I don't know, you can decide that for yourself. Once I heard that it was far enough away, I jumped out of bed. I opened the baby gate and I ran all the way to my aunt and uncle's room and crawled into bed with them. Let me tell you, I scared the crap out of them. Once they finally made room for me, I got all cozy, but I couldn't sleep. Anyway, it was about a minute after I got into bed with them that I heard the baby gate slam. I was so terrified, but at least I was with my aunt and uncle. The next morning, I woke up in their bed alone upstairs. Now, you might not believe this, but I don't really care if you do or not, but I woke up with three scratches on my chest, and they were very painful. To this day, nobody really believes me that it happened, besides my best friend. This event still haunts me. I don't really talk to people about it because nobody ever believes me and I don't want to get ridiculed, but I just had to vent. Whatever it was, I still don't know. A demon posing as a child? Probably. Something evil? That's for sure. But I guess I'll never really know. I grew up in a haunted house. I have so many stories. But this one was on my mind today. Sidebar. Most of the encounters revolve around my brothers. I believe that my middle brother has abilities. And I believe that my youngest brother, who is also autistic, is a medium. I'm a little sensitive, but nothing like them. One particular evening, my teenage brother and two of his buddies were hanging out at my parents' house and nobody was there but them. My brother got a phone call from a girl, so he went upstairs to his room, leaving the two friends downstairs. When he came back down about 15 minutes later, he found the house completely quiet and totally dark. The TV had been turned off and the lights as well. He said that the only light was the last little bit of dwindling daylight trickling through the windows and the glass on the front door. He started laughing and calling for his friends, thinking that they were hiding from him and playing a joke. He walked through the downstairs room by room but couldn't find them. He started feeling really nervous so he began trying to call his friends, but they weren't answering, and he couldn't hear their phones ringing from where he was. 
He went and checked upstairs to see if maybe they'd snuck past him and were hiding, but they were nowhere. By now, he said the entire vibe of the whole house had changed. He was feeling very anxious. He ran down the stairs and exited the front door directly across from the steps on the front porch, leaving the front door slightly open. As soon as he stepped outside, the front door slammed, and something from the inside of the house started banging on the door with great force and intensity. It really scared him, and he was also getting irritated, so he opened the door to confront his friends. He was laughing, saying, oh ha ha, okay, you all got me, but inside the house was silent and still. It was at that point that he heard a car door shut in the cul-de-sac and he turned around only to see his friends arriving at the house. They told him that they had left when he took that phone call and ran to the gas station. They swore on their lives that they knew nothing about the door. This is another story from my haunted house. This is about my youngest brother that I mentioned in part one. He's 10 years younger than me and has Asperger's syndrome. Everyone in my immediate family is 100% convinced that he's a medium. I think that's why our house is haunted, because I had a dream about that. I think they're drawn to him. Anyway, when he was maybe three or four, he was pretty developmentally delayed. He could speak, but he chose what he spoke about very carefully, and that was usually only his two special interests, Toy Story and the aliens that came to talk to him at night. There was a nursing home being converted into an antique mall in my hometown, and one afternoon, my mom went down there with my brother in tow to see about renting a space. The second they walked in the door, my almost nonverbal brother said, This place is haunted, and was totally fascinated. He wasn't scared at all. He took off running through the halls while my mom spoke with the owner about rates. He eventually found his way back to my mom and would not stop tugging on her until she acknowledged him. When she spoke to him, he started telling her and the owner about all the ghosts that were there. He said that they were all old people and that they were really bored. He said one old man was quite weird. The owner actually verified this by saying multiple contractors had quit because they said it was haunted. Another example. My mom loves yard sales, and would sometimes have estate sales for people for a profit. She had trouble finding a daycare that would accommodate my brother, so he was usually with her. She had an estate sale for a lady that was referred to her by an acquaintance. While preparing for the sale, she purchased a gorgeous bedroom set that ended up being my bedroom set. After their sale, she met with whom she thought was the homeowner to pick up the bedroom suite. They were standing in the bedroom chatting when the husbands were disassembling the furniture, and my then seven-ish year old brother comes running in, saying that the sweet old lady in the kitchen gave him some cookies and that they were very delicious. My mom looked at the lady, who then burst into tears. She said that this was her mom's house, and that her mom had recently passed. The neighborhood kids always called her the cookie lady and would often ring her doorbell in hopes of receiving a cookie, which she was always happy to provide. Such a sweet little quip. There are also darker stories from this house, but always nice to end on a bright note once in a while.